Mr. Here. Okay, I was going to show you how I widen my SPA um, controller end um, contactors. Uh, when I this is a this is the controller here. Um, it's in a waterproof casing. And oh, this is the second one I've had to buy because it blew because I didn't have um, a heavy duty contactor. So. Um, it's actually quite simple to uh, to understand how to wire it once you kind of figure out how it works. It took me quite a while, and um, thanks to my brother-in-law, um, he gave me a bit of a hand to kind of get to grip on it. So, first of all, I guess I need to explain the contactor because that's the important part. Because the reason this unit blew is because there was too much load uh, current load going through the the very small. Um, terminals and relay on this device because it's basically when it switches to temperature it closes the circuit so the wiring is quite simple these two little wires here on the on the left here um, they're for my temperature probe which I've got in my pool um, my spa the two these two here in the middle they are um, positive and negative so phase and neutral um, normal constant feed and that powers up this unit, that's all it does, doesn't do anything else. And then this this blue one here is constant 230 volts. And this one here is is the switched output. So as soon as this um, is set to uh, start or um, you know to operate something, that's the output to the system that it operates. So in this case, it's switching my it's switching direct power to my contactor. So on your contactor, you've got a coil, which is on the outside here. And these two, the, the top and bottom one on this case, this is a Hager 425, I think it is. So basically it's a 230 volt coil because I'm switching 230 volts here. And it's 230 volt, 230 volt output, so it's single phase. But I've got a four pole because I want this thing to last for a long time. So I've got each, so, so in, the, in the back, you've, the back half of the contactor, you've got your heavy duty um, outputs. So I've actually got all these looped out. Uh, don't worry about the color, because really all it is, is you're using a positive on the on this coil, and then an earth or a um, neutral on the coil, and that's your circuit. And in, at the bottom, so you've got um, constant power to the bottom of the coil, so it's energised on the bottom half of the um, contactor all the time, but these contacts here do not pass power through until you actually energise this, create a circuit, and it pulls the contactor down. Once that's done, you've got power out. So you've got 230 in, contact pulls down, and then 230 out. That's all it is. It's a very simple switch done by a low, a low load coil so it takes all the load off this device and puts it all on here and I've got a four pole because I wanted to divide the load between four poles so that instead of having um, eight amps or 11 amps going through one contactor because I've got them all set up um, daisy chained together as you can see they're all looped and connected to one another just to show you in there one one daisy chain to the next one to the next one to the next one and then the feed goes in on the other side uh, so the the output sorry so these two wires here on this cable here pretty much go to my um, well, this gray one powers my pump directly this uh, blue one is positive um, constant 230 volts all the time supplying voltage all the time to the bottom of this contactor so this part the top closes the circuit pulls the contactor in and that's where the high load can 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 run out of that contactor so so what I've done here is I've actually taken on this side the 230 volts going in I've got it all switched off so I can touch and do whatever I want 230 volt here I've got that. I should have put one of these little connectors here on it, really. It looked a lot tidier. Um, basically, I've taken a T out of this is the feed out, coming out of this cable here. So that's for my, that's, that's the one that actually 
does uh, comes from my motor. Uh, sorry, I've linked, I've just linked this one down to the control to the contactor. This one here is all the life power from the from the motor and goes back to the motor. So I've got this 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 cable here is joined to this contactor. So I've basically teed into I've put a T into the or tapped into pretty much if you can imagine a one straight wire and then you tap off it and run a run a separate one off it. Well I'm running that down to my contactor to supply constant voltage to the bottom of the high load at the bottom there. And I'll show you in a second the blue cable going in there. So that's constant 230. Now the brown one on this one is the switch 230 out. So once this actually operates and, and tells it I want, I want something to operate, it supplies power out of this output from its little relay inside it. And this one here goes to the low load side of your contactor. So that's that's actually going to create the, the power to pull it in, but you need to close complete that circuit and at the bottom of the coil, which I'll show you in a second, that goes to earth. And so I've got all of these these two, two this this is here is another T tap that I've got here uh, on the on the earth. So or, or negative, neutral, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's actually neutral, but in a normal circuit you just have red and black, you know, positive and then negative. So this is a negative to complete the circuit. So everything's all, all common. Um, and that's really it. That's really it. So, and I've got these t these two gray ones here. This is my, this here is directly feeds the pump. So this one coming into it is fed from the out, the high load 230 volt output from my contactor. Um, yeah, which is here. So that there, is this one here going back to my, and what fires the motor itself. So it's really quite quite simple indeed. Yep. Um, so yeah, so this top part you're closing the circuit. So you put your, your positive, your uh, switched, when you want to apply it and get the contactor to work into the A1 on this one. Yep, A1. And I've got the the switched output, so once it actually pulls in, I've got that out of number, I think it's number, what is it, number one. And then I've got the rest of them looped across, so all three contact, all four, four contactors are pulling in together. And the other side, I've got your constant, the blue coming into terminal two. On your left hand side there, the blue, which is your constant 230 volts. And then I've in, in the eight in all of the other ones with the red cables going in four, six, and eight is a common daisy chain, just common right across all four terminals. So that shares the load. Instead of running eight amps through one contactor, it splits them up and divides it by how many contacts. So I've got four, so that's two. So I'm running two amps maximum load on each contactor, which means that it'll last for years and years and years. And then I've just got my earth here in A2. And that just closes the circuit and comes back to the common earths here. And that's really it. Then you set your controller up, your, your actual um, controller up to do whatever you want to do. So hopefully that makes sense. And I'll, any questions, just let me know. Cheers. Well, that's actually quite simple once I figured it out. So they're not that complex, even though there's heaps of... Um, you know, connection points going into it. It's really just positive, negative on the coil, and then positive in, and where you want your output to go. Constant positive in, and then output when it switches, where you want it to go. That, in this case, feed my motor with the gray one on this side. Cool, Westy over now.